Hormal Foods stock, ticker symbol HRL. This stock is up almost 7% on the year to date chart, with some interesting movements, but also outperforming the S&P 500. Looking at the recent earnings report, we see that both the EPS and revenue expectations were beaten. However, for the upcoming earnings, all analysis expect a miss. But people love Hormel food stock because of multiple reasons. One of the main thing being the dividend. And I understand why with dividend yield at 3.25%, which is a great number. And take a look at the dividend growth. 57 years of dividend increases. And if we look at the past 5 years, we see that Hormel was beaten by the S&P 500. And to be honest, this doesn't look any good. So, could this be the perfect time to buy Hormel stock? Well, by the end of the video I will give you my 3 price targets, so make sure to stay tuned and see how I build up to these price targets. I'm very excited to see what you guys think about this stock, so please let me know your thoughts in the comments. My name is Thomas and this is Thomas Invest. I'm an investor looking for great stocks at great prices. So what does Hormel do? Hormel Foods is a branded food company. Major brands include Hormel, Spam, Genio, Columbus, Applegate, Planders and Skippy. Many of these hold the number one or two market share in their respective categories. Looking at the results, we see that volume increased 4%, looking pretty good. Net sales was up 1%, and EPS is flat year over year. To me, this doesn't look that exciting. We know that Hormel Foods is not growing double digit year over year, but margin or EPS isn't heavily increasing either, which is a bit disappointing. However, operating cash flow increased 98% year over year, looking really good to me. Looking at the retail segment, we see that the volume is up only 2%, and net sales and profit are down year over year. To me, this doesn't look too exciting. Looking at the food service, we see that volume is actually up 8%, and both the net sales and profit are also up year over year. To me, this looks really good. The international segment is up 11% in volume, however, net sales and profit aren't really growing alongside with it, but it looks really promising. Looking at the full year of 2024, we see that Hormel expects to deliver a net sales of 12.2 to 12.5 billion, with an EPS of 1.43 to 1.57. With that, Hormel is reaffirming its net sales growth outlook of 1% to 3%. And now that we know a bit more about the company, it's time to check the fundamentals of this stock. But first, if you made it this far into the video, I want to thank you a lot for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe to my channel to receive multiple analysis every week. And also join my Discord channel for free to meet other people within the community and to talk about stocks. It's completely free, so don't miss it out. Let's continue with diving into the fundamentals. Hormel is a 90 billion market cap company. PE ratio is at 24, indicating you pay a premium for the stock. Later in this video, I will show you my 3 price targets for Hormel stock, so make sure to watch until the end. Revenue is at 12 billion and in this graph we see that revenue went up in the long run. During lockdown periods, revenue really went up big time. Most recently, it is stabilizing after a period of decreases. Margins are decreasing in the past few years, which is a really shame after increasing for almost a decade. To me, this doesn't look any good. EPS is pretty much the same story as the revenue and margins. It is growing really steady and consistent over a longer period of time. But most recently, it isn't really growing anymore. Analysis expected EPS is going to face some problems in 2024. But after that, we're looking at 8 to 18% growth. To me, this looks pretty good. For the revenue, analysis expect pretty much the same. The only difference is that the growth numbers are a bit lower with 2 to 5% growth. Return on assets is sitting at 6%, which is a bit of a low number. 
Return on equity looks really good and the most important number, return on invested capital is sitting at roughly 6%, which is also a low number. On top of that, it is lower versus the 5 year average, which is not a good sign. But keep in mind, the 5 year average is impacted a lot by the lockdown periods. Current ratio is at 1.5, which is a great number. It is also pretty steady historically, so to me, this looks good. Right now, Hormo has 3.3 billion in debt. I prefer companies that can pay down at least a big chunk of their total debt, with the total cash. Hormo has almost 1 billion in total cash, so they can pay down a decent amount of their debt. To me, this looks pretty good, but I would love to see 1.5 billion in cash here. So, it is still very important that free cash flow is growing, since this is used to pay down debt, of course but also to buy back shares, pay dividends, and all other things. And here we see that free cash flow is going up in the long run, but not a steady and consistent pace or anything. Shares outstanding are increasing in the long run, which is something that I don't like in general. However, with the stock at a premium price, I don't really blame them. But when shares outstanding are decreasing, it increases your ownership in the company, increases the EPS, lowers the PE ratio, and makes it easier to maintain and increase the dividends. And since we're talking about dividends anyways, dividend yield is sitting at 3.25%, which is a great number. Annual payout is at $1.13, and payout ratio is at 68%. I prefer 50% or lower, so right now they have only 32% left in cash to buy back shares, pay down debt, do acquisitions and all other things. And now it gets really interesting. The 5 year growth rate is at 7% which is a decent number. But they have increased the dividends for 57 years in a row, which is really impressive. And if you take a look at these numbers the dividends paid since 2012, you see that Hormel did increase the dividends at a high pace historically. But growth is really slowing down a lot here. Payout ratio is a very important metric with dividends, it tells you if the dividends are safe. And here we see that historically it looked really good, however, payout ratio is increasing big time years. To me this is not a good sign. In this graph we see the expected dividends in 2024, 2025 and 2026. Of course this is an estimation that can be highly impacted by results, but it gives you a rough indication. It's expected to increase slowly from here. And overall these dividends look really interesting to me, but how about the historical returns? I decided to compare Hormel Foods stock with the overall market, in this case the S&P 500. On the 5 year chart we see that Hormel stock was beaten by the S&P 500 big time. In total Hormel returned minus 3%, and keep in mind this is including dividends. The S&P 500 is sitting at 85% return. On the one year chart things look pretty much the same with minus 9% for Hormel Foods and 21% return for the S&P 500. On the 6 month chart it is finally Hormel Foods that is recovering with almost 15% return, but it still got beaten by the S&P 500 which returned 17%. On the one month chart it is finally Hormel Foods that beats the S&P 500 with 2% return versus minus 4% return for the S&P 500. Bottom line, Hormel Foods was beaten by the S&P 500 in the long run, but in the short run it is really getting some momentum. So could this be the perfect time to buy Hormel stock? Well, let's check the 3 price targets that are created using the Everything Money software which is one of the best tools out there. I'm using a low, mid and high assumption to get the 3 price targets, starting off with revenue growth. From revenue growth I'm filling in 1, 3 and 5%, based on the stock performance, their own outlook, but also because of the analysis. For the profit margin I'm putting in 6, 6.5 and 7%. For the free cash flow margin I'm putting in 7, 8 and 9. For the PE ratio I'm putting in 18, 20 and 22. For the price to free cash flow I'm putting in the same numbers. 
They have several market leading brands and in some areas even a moat. But they are not really growing that much. So that's why I chose this number. My desired annual return is 12.5% since I can get an easy 10% average annual return with owning an ETF. Right now Hormel stock is at $35. I hit analyze and we see a lot of red numbers. We have a low price target of $15 to $18. We have a mid price target of $20 to $25 and we have a high price target of $27 to $35. To me, the mid price target is the most justified here, telling me that this stock is overvalued. Which price target do you think is the most justified? Let me know in the comments down below. My final conclusion on Hormel Foods is that I don't see the excitement. They have an insane track record when it comes to dividends. And yes, the current dividend yield is looking really good at 3.25%. But everything is pointing towards the major issue. Growth is slowing down. The revenue growth isn't really there. Margins are decreasing and dividends are also decreasing in growth year over year. I think most fundamentals look pretty good besides the growth and consistency in margins and free cash flow. From a value point of view I also don't see the excitement since you pay a heavy premium for the slow growing stock. So to me these are the reasons why you should avoid this stock. But remember to always do your own research and never fully trust on what I or other YouTubers say about the stock. I'm not a financial advisor and this content is just for entertaining purposes only. I hope you liked this video and I did bring some insights of the company to you. I would really appreciate a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to get notified when I'm posting a new video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in my next video.